Hello, welcome to Tony's Bonsai. I've got a really exciting project today that I think you're going to enjoy. If you're looking at this and thinking, I don't recognize that, you'd be right. This is a silver birch fusion of four trunks that I put together this morning, trying to combine it with an exposed root. And I also added some wire just for some movement as well. And the reason I didn't film it was because I wanted to really focus on what I was doing, get my technique right in my head, so that I can do the same thing on a bigger scale on camera. And this is what I've got to play with. It's a big bunch of bare root hawthorn. How cool is that gonna look? I used four trees in this, but I actually got five. And this was the fifth. Obviously, I couldn't combine this in with ease, but what a crazy shape that is. I've just trimmed a few roots off here, and that will just go in a nice pot and I'll let that grow. Talk about cool shape. The gloves are on, which is strongly advised when you're working with Hawthorn. The spikes are quite nasty. And let's just go in and take a look and see what I've got. With me looking to create a sort of clump style fusion, the interesting part of these is down here at the roots. So what I'll be looking for is interesting shapes that I can sort of combine together and somehow kind of mesh all the roots into one sort of cohesive unit. And really that's the challenge and the joy of this project for me. I've divided the trees into two piles. These are ones that I consider to be quite weird shaped. They've got quite unusual, sort of strange root, root styles and they're definitely a bit more weird. And my plan is to sort of group these into the center in a, a more traditional kind of clump style. So sort I of like that, just, just finding a place where they naturally sit together. And if you've never done anything like this, I highly recommend it. It's great fun, very creative. And you, you, you really have to sort of, so th there's a weird curve to this one here. So I'm thinking if I can kind of cup that in there, I've managed to get that quite tight in. That sits in there really well. So these are all going together very nicely. This, if, if I just left it at these, this would be a really interesting group and I'm almost tempted to do that really. I've got to keep rotating them round to make sure that I'm filling all those root spaces and I quite like that. I think that's looking quite good. So I'm just, just gathering them and trying not to have them cross over. So this one fits in here nicely, but it's crossing through the center. I don't really want it to do that. So I'll pull that out and reorientate it. So You just have to keep putting them together, pulling them apart, sticking them back in until, oh, that was a nice one. I, I like the position of that there. That comes out, which is good. This one's very difficult because it's got like a big weird knuckle on it. I do think I can use it, but I need to get it in the right place. So we're getting something there now, we're getting the beginnings of some kind of shape. And all I want to do now is pick trees to create a more interesting root mass at the bottom. 
So one at a time, I grab these smaller trees. Add them in and I'm thinking about where these roots are going to sort of stick out and this is looking like it might end up with a bit of a, a sort of flatter root base than I was perhaps planning on originally. That's fine though. You know, you just, you work with the material and to a certain extent, let it, let it dictate what's going on. There's the odd snap branch. There's not many to be fair, but where there is a snap branch, I'll just remove it. You would not want to be doing this without gloves. This would be so savage on your hands. There we go. Again, you think you've got it all and then you have to take one out and put it back in. And my aim is to keep this trunk section as tight as possible. So I've got all those in there and it's still quite tight, which is what I want because by doing that, I'll get a faster fusion. You know, I don't want to be waiting 10 years for these to fuse. That's particularly weird, those roots there. I don't know if I can get that in and maintain a tight, a tight base. So if there's any that I come across that are just a bit too awkward, I just put, push those to the side and I use those in a separate project. Oh, that was a nice one there. I've got one really big clunky root here that comes out. So I'm thinking this perhaps could be the top of the composition and by piling trees on this side and building around this root with the right trees. Oh, this is a good one. This is almost like a trident, a trident of roots. So perhaps that can sit in there because it was quite slim. When they're thin, I can bend them and I've got those roots in there. So I think on the outside, they're going to work better with the thinner trees. This has got quite an angle on it. So that one will sit in there nicely as well. That's good. So I'm building a, a kind of a spread of roots that's coming around like that. Get that one in there. That fits in nicely. I love this kind of creativity. It's brilliant fun. There, that one now, because it's thin, bends right in. And I can bend it in, get the roots into a good position. And just imagine what that could end up looking like. <laughs> oh, crazy. I'm gonna try and sort this other side out now with a bit more interest, because I've got that other side looking really good. And I'd, I want both sides to be kind of equally, equally interesting, if you will. That's a nice route there. I can get that side on. That's good. This is a good, nice thin one, so I know with this, I can push it in and squeeze it and bend it in. Oh, that's a beauty. So that'll fill this kind of space. And I think, I think I'm there. 
I think the only space could be round here, but these roots are quite nice. If we could get one more in round there. Oh, that's a good one. It's got one really high root going backwards. It's the first one that I've decided to prune. But by pruning that root off now, in fact, there's, there is a second root. I'm having to do all this, obviously, with one hand. And if I can... work that in there. Oh, that's nice roots. You know, I mean, what kind of interesting base will this have? It's getting to the limits of what I can grab now. I would just like something for in here. Oh, that's a good one. That's interesting. There, that fits in nicely in there. Nice interesting roots sticking out. And there's a really interesting one. No, that's the wrong one. Oh, this one here, perfect. Right, this will be the last one now. Not that one. This one here. Yeah, that's perfect. It's got some nice roots splaying out. And it'll just sit in here very nicely. And there we go. That's my clump. What a clump that is, eh? Beautiful. I do have a few branches that have worked their way into the centre. I'll just remove those so they don't clog up the movement of the truck. Sort of the I don't, want him, I don't want him to get in the way of the fusion, basically. So, by clumping those in now, what I need to do is get some vet tape on the go. I normally like to change angles on my videos, but obviously, in this video, I can't let go. It'd be nice to have an assistant They ain't got one. So all I'm doing is getting this vet tape, really squeezing with my left hand there and trying to just get an initial an initial fix of these trunks here in something like the position that I planned. If I can get three or four wraps around, that'll just give it a basic hold. And then I should be able to just look at the roots a bit in a bit more detail. There we go. So that's basically held. Not tight enough for my liking yet. But from there now, I can start to look at these roots and say right so we've got a, a trunk here that slid down I don't like the position of that one so that has to go up got to get that up further up there that then becomes interesting just manipulate the roots a bit and I just work my way around again that one slid down And looking round at this now, I'm really pretty happy with how that's looking. My next thing is to get these trunks as tight as possible. So, these ones here are kind of sliding round a bit. I want them to go as vertically up as possible. You know, I don't want them twisting around. I love fluted trunks on trees, so if I can create that kind of
aesthetic, should I use the word? Sound like Ryan Neal. <laughs> there we go. That's looking good. That's looking pretty good. And I'm just moving these branches around, manipulating them just to just to get things in a good position. Right, now that I've got them in where I pretty much want them, I'm going back to squeezing with my left hand. Oh, I snapped it, snapped the tape. I bought some new vet tape and it's, it's thinner. And it's not as strong as the stuff I was using. It's pretty much rubbish really. But the other stuff that I bought, when I looked online, it was no longer available. We don't matter. It will work. I brought you in a bit closer now. I was able to let go of it because that's tied off. I've doubled up my vet tape and you can see there are a few bits of gaps, but not too many really. I think it's pretty good. I've got kind of, I've got some here with a bit of a gap where they're coming away from the main trunk and I want to close that up. So I will be closing that up now using Brute force, <laughs> basically. In fact, I can twist, twist these two round. And that really pushes those down. Excellent, that worked well, that. Round it goes. Can apply a bit more pressure now because it's double thickness. As opposed to using sort of wire and rubber tubing and everything like I did on my big beach fusion. I'm kind of thinking just this vet tape will do the job. I don't need to bother with any of that. And then I'm not risking scarring the trunks either You doing this. And it seems to hold it in really well. So I clamp it hard as I can with my left hand, pull that tape round pull it round and then clamp clamp that in helps if you've got a good grip strength so handy being a plasterer an ex-plasterer there we go round she goes and at this stage I I can turn the actual tree instead of there. And I'll go for one final wrap, not doubled up, just because it's easier working off the roll like this. And there's enough tension on that now, so I don't need to be cranking on it. This is just to kind of add support I'm getting good with this vet tape though I think if there's uh, ever a, a big medical emergency I could work in the casualty or emergency room or whatever you want to call it or maybe in a vet's bandage, bandaging up horses legs there we go that's had loads around it now. I call that phase one done. And phase two now is, I'm not going crazy on this. I, I realize I'm doing very little really. But I'm just pulling a few of these roots down in this kind of general direction. A 
but there are certainly some nice roots to look at and when these roots develop and thicken and start fusing together you know I can just imagine that as a as a fantastic tree so let's get this in some soil in terms of the base of the tree what I will do is just take off anything which is a bit too long particularly the ones that are going down and the the too thick so I think that'll do I don't want to take too much away from these trees I'm happy for them to sit at that sort of level because I want to expose all this top part anyway so there's no need for it to be Yeah, that's good. I will also just give it a bit of a haircut of the very longest dangly roots. There we go. Lovely. Before I plant this up, I've got an idea. Because it's going to be so challenging getting soil into this root mass, what I think is, let's get some in before I pot it up. So I'm thinking if I can get some soil in the base and then just kind of work it into the roots like that. And if I just spend a bit of time just getting this soil nicely mixed in with all these roots, well then they've surely got a better chance. I can see this being a fairly laborious process, but I'm just going to take 10 minutes and try and work this as much soil as I can into these roots. I know as I turn it round, a lot of it does drop out, but some of it will go in and help to fill those spaces, especially in the center right underneath. Around the edge won't be as bad. I'll be able to work some soil in from the outside. There we go. So let's go for that again. Took the roots down. And... really work that down as much as I can like that and now's the time again for me to really chopstick this as much as I can There are a few roots that I need to tuck in with some vet tape, but before I do that, I just wanted to show you the sort of basic root structure that I've got coming down. So if you can imagine that in a few years, I think these roots are going to be really interesting. That one is a touch weird, and I'm wondering if is it possible at this stage 
No, to push that up, it isn't. It just looks a bit strange, doesn't it? Particularly this one here. I don't mind that there. You know, that's one I'm going to remove. I can just see me not liking that in the future. I may as well get rid of it now. And there's plenty of root left on that tree, so... I'm not worried about the tree dying. And that's quite nice there. I like the way that comes down, so I'm glad that's gone. And apart from that, everything kind of flows down in a, like an organic, quite natural way. And it's this bit here that's just springing a bit too much for my liking. I think it might end up being a bit awkward, so instead of just leaving it, what I'm going to do is... Wrap some tape around it like that. Yeah, that's better. Just pulls these root, sort of straggly roots down into a better position. There, yeah, that's, that's the one I wanted there, that move. So hopefully now I can get that there in. There. That's nice. I can just tell that's going to look a lot better in the future, that, that route there, because of this. And this might help to keep these roots moist down at this bottom section. I'm not going to... Should I, should I wrap this bit in vet tape as well? No, I'm not going to wrap this because I want moisture to get in here. So I'll pile some sphagnum moss around these roots. But that's all been really well chopsticked in now. It would have been really awkward trying to tie this tree in. So this is a time when I use just a couple of wires just fastened around the trunk with a bit of uh, plastic tubing. There we go. And that'll more than adequately support this. It didn't really even need this, if I'm honest. It was already very solid in this part, but why not? May as well. And that can go outside and be watered. I'm going to use these other hawthorns for a slightly different project. That'll be coming in the next week or two. But I'm really happy with the work I've done on this today. If you want to follow the progress of this tree, you know what to do. Other than that, as always, thanks for joining me. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.